Today, we're going to be taking a look at how to create this animation over here uh, of a ball going along in space. And we're zooming in to reveal a new scene. Hello and uh, welcome back. Um, it's been a while since I've uploaded. Now, this won't be like a full on step by step tutorial as such. I'm going to break down each component of the animation and hope you guys enjoy this one. And let's go. All right, so the first line of business is how to create this um, speed line animation going along over here. And it got a lot of people asking me how to create this in After Effects. Um, I would say it's basically a, a trap code, a particular setup, but that's a, a third party plugin. And you know how we do it. If I'm going to make a tutorial about something, I'm going to try to keep the effects as native to After Effects as possible. So we're going to try and recreate this effect over here uh, using CC Particle World. So in this brand new composition, we're going to go up here and create a new solid layer. I'm going to call this one particle. Nice. And in the effects and preset panel, we're going to look for the CC particle world effect right here. Double click on that. And then as you can see, by default, this particle system contain um, a point in the middle where the particle will emit out. They sort of fall down here uh, to the bottom of the screen with um, you know gravity turned on by default. So I'm going to create a new shape layer while selecting this shape layer over here. Hold shift and double click on this rectangle tool. And that's going to help us create a perfect square. We'll deal with the color later on, but then in the shape layer over here, I'm just going to rename that to square while selecting the square layer uh, go to layer and pre-compose and i'm going to call this one article it's, it's sort of clash with the bottom layer over here uh let's just call this thing something else maybe like trail there we go now let's turn off the uh particle layer over here for a little bit and in the cc particle wall effect uh head over to particle a uh, particle type switch from line to textured quad polygon in the texture layer setting, we're going to select the particle uh, layer and rotation speed, uh, reduce it down to zero and initial rotation also down to zero as well. So essentially it's taking the information from inside this particle composition over here and whatever goes on inside of the particle composition will be reflected onto the effect as particles flying out. So unlike in particular, there's no over life setting for how a textured particle look with a little bit of uh, the color tinted on top. So let's jump into the particle comp and adjust the color straight inside of the square layer. So we're going to drop down the menu over here, contents, uh, rectangle, jump into the actual fill color of it, keyframe on the color of the fill, and then click on the layer over here, hit U. In the first, maybe half a second over here, we're going to make it jump through like a whole array of color. In the beginning, we're going to make it like a sort of a bright pastel orange skin tone over here. We're going to make it jump through a purple, a dark purple like this to get to a, um, you know, like a pinkish, pinkish uh, magenta right, right here. Basically, we're going for that, you know, galactic look. Um, <laughs> and then this one, I'm going to make it a little bit darker like this. And then at the end over here, let's just wing it for another one, bring it back to like a bright yellow. And, you know, can, we can always jump back and adjust this color. But basically, we're going to be seeing it per the example. We're going to be seeing it on screen for less than half a second. So let's just scoot these um, all back in a little bit. And then uh, when we jump back to the outside comp, you're going to see the color being reflected onto the particles over here. Right now, the particle seems to be taking the color information of how it's being like in the particle composition at this point in the, in the timeline. So let's jump back to the particle effect. And in the texture time, take that from current to from start. And then we can see um, for each of the particle that's uh, spawning out, it's going to cycle through the range of color that we just put down um, inside of the particle. I kind of want the blue over here to be a little bit, little bit more apparent. Maybe move this blue up a little bit and change this pink down. That's really nice. Another thing we're going to want to do is max opacity, move it 
up to 100% and in the opacity map over here, it's going to require us to draw how opaque um, each of the particle is going from life to death. So we're just going to click on the map over here and just take it all the way up for the entire range. So we don't get uh, all some of that weird overlapping between the uh, particles. Now for the physics of the particle system, Let's go down here. We're going to change it up from explosive to cone axis and then drop the gravity from 0.5 as default to zero. Now that's going to take it from the particle, you know, shooting out uh, from the emitter point to have them shooting out more in a directional fashion. You know, like in the example, we want the particles to shoot out sideways. So in the X axis, we're going to take that down to the maximum minus one. And the Y axis, we're going to take that out to a zero. Also, the extra setting over here, which is like um, how much more random extra angles do you want the particles to shoot out besides the original direction? I'm going to take that down to zero. And now as you can see, uh, the particles are coming out in, the, in a row, um, much less chaotic. Next up, we'll vary out the different position that the particles can shoot out from. That's going to take us to the producer over here and change up the radius of Y to 0.235 like this a little bit and also vary out the X axis of where it's going to come out from. So particles are coming out from over here, you know, it's going to have a different color value compared to something that's born out from here. And we'll also move the position of the emitter a little bit to the right. We got something that looks like this I think we can, we can make it shoot out a little bit faster and that's gonna have to do with the velocity inside of the physics and so we're gonna take the speed up to maybe like a four we're missing some color over here so we're gonna jump back into the particle and drag the distance between the color and even further like that maybe we can drag the speed back to maybe like 3.5 so we get uh, more color variation out here drag the position out here a little bit and maybe the x radius x of the position even more um we're gonna you know you're gonna have to see how it looks uh mask into a rectangle so let's go ahead and do that um create a new shape layer uh with the rectangle tool over here draw a rectangle somewhere and slightly in the middle of the screen over here i'm gonna call this one uh true mask Put it down to the bottom of the trail and from the trail layer over here in the track mat setting take this pick whip and put it onto the trail mask all we need to do is just turn it back on again in the trail mask i'm gonna head over to fill switch from the solid color setting to the linear gradient over here and drag the two handles out and give it uh, a color that's a little bit of resembling the particle system that we have over here so I'm going to make this one purple over here, you know, again, sticking with the, the galactic theme that we have running onto our gradient. I'm going to keep this one on the darker side and maybe scoot these ones back over here and make this a brighter yellow like that. Yeah, that's looking really nice. I feel like these two over here should switch place. Let me do that real quick. There we go. <laughs> That's like an ice cream. You can actually change the size of the particles uh, with the burst size. Uh, maybe drag it up to 0 0.4. Uh, death size also 0 0.4. I really don't get how you know how they need to be different. You already have a map for the opacity. Why not make a map for the scale as well? Maybe just drag the size down just a smidge. 0 0.3, 0 0.3. You know what's coming, right? To get that trail effect. If you're an After Effects veteran, you know what's coming. Echo! Let's go drag it in, and that's gonna ruin your computer if you have a lower, a low tier PC. In the Echo Operator, switch from Add to Maximum. And Echo Time, let's take the first three and make it a zero. And then drag out the number of echoes. Wow. In trap code particular, we'll do this with a built-in aux system uh, instead of that effect. But in this case, we'll have to rely on the echo effect. Uh, in the decay, um, we're going to take that down to maybe 
six point maybe point five is good let's play that from the beginning yeah it's looking nice i think i think there's still maybe a little bit of a gap over here between between the particles so let's drag that in even more this uh second three over here we'll make that a one gives us that um that cleaner look on the edges of the rectangle yeah that's nicer drag the number of echoes up even more and the decay level up to 0.7 not too bad you know what i'll be able to live with you know having this maybe like changing this one over here to like a two and the number of echoes are going to drop it down 39 or something we, we still got that gaps between the particles but the loading speed is um, significantly more tolerable in this uh, in this case. So yeah, that's how I would do the speed lines if I had to rely on a native effects from After Effects. If you still have some processing power left, uh, something you can do to remedy this kind of gap between the echo particles is to use a directional blur and add that onto the trail of particles that you have. Um, direction, take it to 90 and drag the blur length up until you can see the, you know, the gaps between the particles start to blend into each other and then add in a level effect. Add that to the trail as well. Uh, move on to the alpha channel and then in the alpha input white, we're going to drag it down until the uh, Oops, and not until it disappears, but you know, until we get slightly a little bit of that edge back and then the decay, we're going to drag the decay down even more to maybe a 91.91. I, I think we can get a little bit more of that edge back and maybe drag down the uh, alpha gamma settings to 0 0.28. And there you go. Some things look, you know, a little bit blended into each other, but I, you know, I still think that looks nice. Boom, and that is how I would approach the speed lines in CC Particle World. Here are my uh, final settings. If you guys want to take a look, copy the numbers. But yeah, just play around and experiment with what you find to be the best looking. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll catch you guys again in part two.